you just came back and you're going to be talking about Star Wars again. You, you lying piece of sh By the way, this is my favorite cup of all time. I got it at Pensacola and it's got this little shark. But dude, it, it's, it's, it's great. And it's got a reusable straw, a metal one, which is fantastic. Um, so yes, let's talk about the thing that I haven't watched. <laughs> the Acolyte. So, okay, um, I really wanted to make this video, like, legit, I really wanted to make this video on why I haven't watched The Acolyte. And it's not just, like, The Acolyte in itself, but, like, Disney Star Wars, right? <laughs> so, um, how can I begin? So, here's the thing. Um, I did watch Boba Fett. Uh, to my demise, I watched Boba Fett, and then I watched Obi Wan Kenobi, the the show, and I could not finish Obi Wan. I, I felt just insulted <laughs> watching Obi Wan. I really hated it. Uh, I watched the ending of Obi Wan, but I I think like I legitimately dropped it around episode like four, and then I watched the Vader Obi Wan fight, and like I know a lot of people get like super like intense like oh that was like super great because he was like seeing anakin and, and obi-wan and, and and fighting and and uh, and all of that but nostalgia doesn't work on me that well like there the only thing that i'm very nostalgic about that will make me dismiss some like stupidity or a lot of stupidity is jurassic park and that's why jurassic park Dominion uh, I'm like yeah I, I guess I enjoyed it like it's such a fucking terrible movie but because of the nostalgia I'm like mm, it was fine though you know I enjoyed it <laughs> but, but Star Wars doesn't like the nostalgia of Star Wars doesn't work on me at all so I am definitely not victim to the um, to the marketing tactics of Disney executives and and I dropped Obi-Wan and that's when I made the decision to just not watch Disney Star Wars again. And I know, like, a lot of people do call it, like, it's not Disney Star Wars. It's Star Wars. Yeah, yeah bitch. But, like, clearly, like, it, Star Wars has been made by different people and everything. So you call the originals and the prequels. You don't call them just, like, the Star Wars movies, right? Like, you divide them into categories. So let's divide for the sake of argument in this particular video, Disney Star Wars as what Disney has done with Star Wars since since its purchase. So let me just be absolutely clear. When Force Awakens came out, I really liked it. I was like, dude, this is great because it felt like a good setup movie. Then The Last Jedi came out and well, we all know what happened then. And then Rise of Skywalker came out, and I actually disliked Rise of Skywalker way more than I disliked The Last Jedi. Because at least The Last Jedi had a beginning, middle, and end. The Rise of Skywalker was just marketing nostalgia on overdrive and just like machine gunning everyone with like, let's see if we can please the Redditors and the casual fans all at the same time with like an amalgamation on all the different things that they would like to see you want to see the millennium falcon here's the falcon you 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 want to see lando uh, here's lando uh the villain let's let's make the villain a palpatine for somehow uh let's uh, let's give chewbacca his medal at, like it was just such a such such a huge pile of marketing shit and I hated it. I really hated The Rise of Skywalker way more than I hated The Last Jedi, being honest. But then, like, some of the shows were fine. Like The Mandalorian. I loved Mandalorian Season 1 and Season 2. Then, when I watched Boba Fett and they kind of, like, retconned the decision of having uh, that stupid-ass thing, Baby Yoda... Uh, come back to to Mando and have Luke be the Luke of the sequels and not the original Luke. That's kind of when I realized, like, hey, at the end of the day, this is Disney Star Wars. Like, this is 
th this is consistent with their brand. Like, I cannot expect them to make what George Lucas did originally because this is, this is, this is something different. This is, this is, this is, uh, this is them. And that's kind of when I, like, realized I shouldn't expect anything from them anymore. I shouldn't. And I'm not going to. But I kind of was, like, it's still, like, like, an emotional, emotionally abusive girlfriend, you know, the, you, you know, the type with, like, the blue green hair and stuff like that bunch of tattoos especially with the number 13 and like a nightmare before christmas tattoo and everything and they like the, the type of girl that just emotionally manipulates you to say sorry even though it was her fault and she leaves and like your your life is going to be so much better because she's gone and your mom is celebrating the fact that she's gone but then you're like oh, no but like do like you know, she can change. <laughs> like, and then you go back and then you live in the gutter for like two years and become a heroin addict. So that's kind of like, like mentally, I was like, I shouldn't expect anything from Disney at this point. But emotionally, I was still kind of expecting something. And then Obi-Wan came out. And uh, I don't remember if Obi-Wan came out like before or after Mandalorian season three. But I did not watch Mandalorian Season 3, so probably was before. So Obi-Wan came out, and I didn't watch Andor, even though everyone says that Andor is like the best thing that they, that they did. I just, I'm not interested in watching Andor. Like, I, I don't care for Andor. Even though he's Mexican, Diego Luna, and yay, representation. But I, I, just, I just didn't care for it, so I didn't watch it. There was other things that I was watching at the time, one of them being Assassination Classroom. I was watching the anime Assassination Classroom at the time and nothing could get me uh, like out of the house if I was watching Assassination Classroom. Anyways, so Obi-Wan came out and I was like, dude, this is, this is lazy. This is incompetent to a different level. And I, I honestly felt so internally sad because why are they making every single legacy character a bomb, homeless, like defeated in life person? Like, you have Han Solo leaving his family. You have Luke Skywalker, Luke Skywalker becoming a hermit, um, a negative hermit at that. Obi-Wan also, too. Like, it, like, all of the legacy characters are just, like, fucking hermits, homeless, and just devoid of any sort of spark, charisma, and charm. And it's just, ugh. So, I was like, dude, why? And like I said, I dropped it. And then, I, I, I obviously kept up to date. Uh, I would watch reviews from Star Wars Theory, from Angry Joe, from Jem Jeremy Jans, another couple of YouTubers, to see what they were, you know, what the state of Star Wars was. Because I, I unsubscribe from Disney+. Plus. I, I haven't had Disney+, Plus in, in, a, in a minute. And not because of protests. It's just because, like, they don't have anything that I'm interested in. And the things that I'm interested in, which are like the Disney classics, I have them on DVD, so I can just watch that, you know? Anyways, so um, the Acolyte came around, finally, after so much hype. And I don't know why people got excited for the Acolyte when I was like, dude, this is a recipe. Recipe for retconning disaster. And I, and I know that some people, especially Star Wars Theory, he was really excited for, for the series. And, and I was like, dude, this is going to be bad. Like, I, I just feel like they're not going to put the care and love into this to respect the Phantom Menace. Because this is just a hundred years and they're making like a Sith Apprentice show. That, um, based on the track record, I don't think that this is going to go the way you want it to. And again, I haven't seen it, but I've seen clips on Twitter. I've seen reviews from people that I trust 
from different sides of the spectrum because I, one thing that I fucking hate is the echo chamber. Like if you just watch something and you're like, I just want to watch reviews of people praising this thing because I liked it or hating this thing because I hated it. I just think that echo chambers are like idiotic. So I, I try to follow YouTubers with different with different opinions and see what they what they what they think and, and say in regards of certain certain things. So I watch uh, I, I watch a lot of reviews, a lot of clips, and I have enough like what I consider enough basis to to come to a conclusion. The shit sucks. <laughs> and I'm not going to waste my time watching it. I'm going to waste my time watching people talk about it. Because, you know, that's only like a 5-10 minute video as opposed to watching the entire like 30 minute to an hour episode. So, I just, that's the reason why I didn't watch The Acolyte. And it's proving me right. The Acolyte, based on what I've seen, has disrespected the lore, has disrespected the timeline... Uh, has made Star Wars awkwardly sexual. Like, we have, like, this romance between, like, the Acolyte and the Sith Master type of thing. And, 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 and you, you, you watch the clip with the audio description from Disney Plus. It's like, oh, the, he takes his robe, accentuating his muscles. I'm like, I mean, great. If, if this was Game of Thrones... I would consider it tame. I'm like, hey, give give some more dig, give some more booty, like go for it. But this Star Wars, Star Wars has never been like so blatantly sexual. Like, yes, we had the Padme scene when when she's like, oh, you shouldn't have kissed me, wearing the most like provocative suit or like slave lay and stuff like that. Yes, but like to actually have like legit sexual tension so often. <laughs> That's like pushing the boundaries. Uh, something that I don't think belongs in Star Wars, to be honest with you. But the Acolyte is almost going to come to an end. I believe the, the last episode will air uh, Tuesday. I'm recording this video on a Saturday. I don't know if I'm going to put this video right after or before. But based on the discussion so far, all the episodes except for one, have been deplorable. And I have no interest in watching anything uh, that is Disney Star Wars related. I love the game with Cal Kestis, uh, Fallen Order. Uh, I, I, I love those games. I really enjoyed playing them. But clearly they were made and written by different people, by a different team. But yeah, I mean... I can remember a time back in 2019 when I was still like heavy into Star Wars. I remember that time where I was like, hey, I will always love Star Wars because I at least I have the uh, I have the originals. And whether that is true, yes, it is true. Whereas that is true that I still love the originals and the prequels. Yes, 100 percent. My love for Star Wars to watch it or to to make it a prevalent part of my life thanks to Disney is almost as extent as the T-Rex so yeah I do think that Disney has damaged the brand to an insane degree uh there's there's many things that they can do to like revive it and get the fans back on board and but i think it's it's so damaged that only time will tell if if we were right or we were wrong right so but that's it that's that's my rant of why i haven't watched the acolyte and why i don't plan on watching anything like disney star wars related in in a good while but you let me know in the comments like what you think like you think my approach is is good or bad or what has been your approach so far to to how things have been played out
That's it. Let me know in the comments. I'll talk to you later. Bye.